And similarly, with the NDAA, we also had a surprise. Going back to January the 1st, 2012, New Year's Eve, President Obama had signed the authorization for indefinite detention without trial by the military, okay, which could be used to give the Gitmo treatment to everyone. And when we looked at this, we said, well, it's troubling because we have an authorization for the use of military force that is not really limited to foreign wars. It could be used here in the United States. It's worldwide. Now, they said at the time on the uh, authorization of the use of military force, that was directed against al-Qaeda. This particular one is being directed now against ISIL. Mm -hmm. And uh, presumably, if they call it ISIS, they won't have to do a third one, okay? <laughs> but what's also troubling about this is that there is no limitation as to where it can be used or for how long it can be used. So they basically are giving all presidents uh, a blank check to use military ground troops wherever, whenever, for as long as they wish. Uh, and that's what's really troubling about this, besides the fact that this is coming up as a surprise. Uh, even the Senate Majority Whip, John Cornyn, who would be the one to introduce legislation to others, was totally surprised. And asked about it, he goes, uh, McConnell did? He, he introduced that? I didn't know anything about that. So when we see this type of thing being done in this way, we should be very concerned about it. We should also be concerned about any bill that gives uh, a, a, a carte blanche to the government to go anywhere at any time. Just as we've talked about before, the war on terror is an open blank check as it is, mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a war against a tactic. There's not typically a named enemy, but even when there is a named enemy, uh, I, they can always declare that somebody is associated with uh, ISIS, uh, with ISIL, and now they're bringing people in by massive amounts into the United States. We should be very concerned about that because that means that they will be using that here in America. Yes, and we've seen uh, things such as Rex 84. As a matter of fact, I was reading this online the other day, reading up on Rex 84, how they had plans uh, going back to 1984, a readiness exercise with yeah. Oliver North, who was busted under Iran Contra. And it was yeah. so controversial at the time, but people don't understand that they keep repackaging these things. That was 1984. Yeah. yeah. What type of thing do they have now? And we see this right now with the... Uh, with the document you have. When you look at this, you have to understand that, you know, the, the government doesn't follow the restrictions that are in the Constitution in so many blatantly obvious ways. So why would we expect that when they give themselves this kind of wiggle room, when they introduce these kind of measures, when you've got a massive snowstorm and nobody knows anything about it, it's introduced at the last moment, just as Obama, remember when the NDAA came out, he had pledged that he was not, it was a controversy about the fact there's going to be indefinite detention by the military. He says, I'll veto that. And then quietly, on New Year's Eve, he signs this in, and then he puts in a sign, signing statement saying, well, I want to make it clear I would, I would never use this against Americans, but who knows what pre next uh, uh, presidents would do it. Who knows if he will change his mind? Because he had just lied to everybody about the fact that he wasn't going to sign it, that he's right. going to veto it. And so then he signs it and says, don't worry, uh, I've now got a new promise for you that you can trust. Uh, you can trust me. I'm on the honor <laughs> system. Thank you so much, David Knight, and I'm sure we'll have more reports about this. Stay tuned after this for more special reports. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which one I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Leanne McAdoo for InfoWars.com. I'm standing here in front of the waterline in Flint, Michigan. Now, people have been coming in and out of here all day, every day, since a federal emergency has been declared. We've got the Army National Guard out here. Uh, everyone rolls up to this waterline. They've got to show ID. And each family receives one case a day. And like we heard uh, one of the residents here to tell us that, you know, you got to use one bottle of water to get yourself soapy and then the next bottle of water you'll use to actually clean all the soap off. So if you can imagine for a family of four or five, that's not that much water to last you throughout the day. They have had some reports of people actually trying to cheat the water system, getting more cases of water. And of course, you know, some people aren't even able to come here and get that water. So they're being taken advantage of uh, by people who are trying to resell this free water. Um, again, they're taking donations. And they say they haven't run out of water just yet, but we do have, um, you know, Cher has said she's going to donate about 200,000 cases of water. So, I mean, that's pretty impressive. People are all stepping up here. Uh, but as you can see, this is the state of emergency here in Flint, Michigan. This is what people um, are having to deal with. Depending on the, the government and the uh, assistance of kind people and their donations to get this one case of water a day. Stay tuned to Infowars.com for more reports. $66 before one drop of water comes out my tap. Yeah. And we're paying for it. We can't bathe in it. We can't cook in it. We can't do anything. I lost the animal to feeding it to it. You can't do anything with it. The only thing you can do is flush your toilets. Mm -hmm. And that's the God honest truth. Yeah. And make sure that you use cold water with anything in Flint. Hot, yeah. The vapors are killing us. That's, that's the where truth. the... And the vapors have asthmatic, to do with my husband, he has COPD, I'm asthmatic, well, you know, the hair loss, I've got it. People want to talk about it, let's talk about it. Because I'm 52 years old, I have hair that was down to my butt, now I've cut it because I gotta hide the bald spots from the water. And where we gotta go, where are we gonna go to bathe? What are we supposed to do? 
We, we, we can't go nowhere. We have to pay for this water. We've got shut-off notice. Oh, they're not going to give you shut-off notices. They're not going to do it in December. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah, shut me off in December, all right, for non non-payment. Had to pay it. Or in December, you know, my kids would have went without Christmas. We had to pay for water that stinks. You can't drink. You can't smell. Looking at it make you choke up a little bit. So it's sickening. That we pay are high. We have, we have the high highest rates. water rates. They oh, upped our water rates three times in one year, and it was like 70% in one year without um, the people's vote on it. We didn't have a say in it. It went from one amount to another amount to another amount, and it's like, oh, well, I ain't using that much water. Oh, now your water bill's this much. You know? And I have another problem with the Flint's basic... Um, little thing in their political game here. Isn't it funny that we've got this, I'm gonna call it Watergate, because there was a, a break-in to the city files, the water department, and only the things that can get the people that did what they did or got the dirt on them come out missing. Not my bills, not the meter-ridden bills, not the bills gonna be sent to the people, <laughs> just the information that's gonna cover their butts came out missing. Can anybody say Watergate? And it isn't, it isn't them against us, and it shouldn't be, it should be, we the damn people for once. Stand together united. It is, I am just one of all of us. And it takes all of us to make this merry-go-round go, you know? And that's what makes me so angry is like, I don't want to talk, I didn't want to either, you know? Because I'm so angry now that sometimes biting my tongue just ain't enough. And I look at my grandson, and he's got sores, and I look at the skin problems, and he's um, a mixed child. And he has a lot of skin issues anyways with ashiness, and, his, uh, and nothing's hitting it. He's had little spots on his head, and like she said with her son, oh, that they were saying it was scabies last year. No, they told my grandson, oh, it's scabies, put this on it. Oh, no, try this antibody, try that. It was never scabies. Here they were poisoning our kids, putting this stuff on them day after day for these rashes that never went away until they, we stopped using the water. You know what I do? It takes five waters, bottles of water to take a shower in Flint. You dump the first one over you and it gets your hair wet. You wash up, you get all soapied up and you kind of let it just drizzle down, wash it up and then you use the next four to rinse off. Ta-da, that's a friggin' shower in Flint. I'm here with business owner Rob Clady. Now, Rob, thanks for talking to us. How has this affected you, knowing that the water is contaminated here? What's it doing for business? What's the, the, the mood in the air? Well, the mood is concerned. I think almost every one of our customers that haven't been here before will ask that question about the water. Like, what are you doing? What do you think? And so, yeah, it's something that we've had to, to deal with. I'm sure it's impacting um, sales, but I do feel pretty fortunate that, um, you know, we're still doing quite well. People are coming in, and I think it has even inspired people that want to support us, knowing that we do test, that we're safe uh, to get out and help, and help us out, too. So, um, all in all, I mean, there is a very concerned mood in the city, but, I mean, personally, I feel very fortunate. And so what about, uh, what do you feel about some of the reassurances with the water levels? They're doing a lot of testing. Uh, we've seen some of the emails coming out where they are um, sort of allowing the water to run through the, the tap before testing it to sort of mess with the levels a little bit. Have you done testing of your own? Are you satisfied with what you're hearing? So, yes, we always test. Um, <clears throat> there's lots of things that, that we hear, um, you know, trusted or, oh, no, it's the worst thing. I don't know. I guess I'm a skeptic by nature. So we test everything we always have. We filter. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, our kind of our obligation is to our customer uh, to provide, yeah, safe water. It's, it's at the core of, of the beer that we make, of the coffee that, that we brew. Uh, so we need to be certain that it is good. And so we have to test it. Um, and that's always been the case and it always will be the case. So I don't pay a whole lot of attention to... to um, what everyone you know the changing mood of the day or whatever uh, because we need we need to know on our end that it is safe mm -hmm. and so you were actually kind of lucky because when you opened this business in 2011 you actually installed uh, sort of a powerhouse of a reverse osmosis machine so you sort of lucked out in that respect but what about when you go home you know what's the mood there well we we do actually happen to live in this building oh. so 
I have six children and they come downstairs, they take turns and they get bottles of water and they take it back up. Um, so yeah, I know what we're drinking. I'm very confident in it. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it's very, again, very fortunate to have that system and, and have the confidence of, of knowing what's in it. And then, so what are you hearing about from other people in other neighborhoods? Is it is it localized to just one neighborhood or is the entire area here in Flint affected by this, this water switchover? Well, we know the entire area is not affected because um, those like myself that have done the testing, like our area, or at least this particular area, has never showed lead in the samples. We test monthly.